Thank you, Mariana. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship at Hazelwood Christian Church. It is the Sunday before Thanksgiving, hard to believe. Um, and there's been so much sadness this year, but there's also so much to be thankful for. So I'm going to be playing the traditional Thanksgiving hymn, Come Ye Thankful People Come. Interestingly enough, it was written, or this arrangement was done by one of my former seminary professors, Dr. Ronald Bowd. So it makes me thankful this morning for all of those people who have taught me and, and poured their lives into me, uh, not only as a pianist, but as a person as well. Wow, I am so grateful for your talent, Lori. And even though, as you said, there's um, much to be uh, dismayed about this past year, there's also much to be grateful for. And I am so grateful for you and your talent and the um, ability that we have now to watch you play. It's just magnificent. Thank you, Lori. Well, good morning once again. We are grateful that you are joining us today for worship. We are Hazelwood Christian Church in Muncie, Indiana, and today is our Gratitude Sunday, November 22nd of 2020. I have a few quick announcements to make. As always, a reminder of Reverend Jason's time of devotion on Tuesdays at 1 p.m. on Facebook. Join him live for that. Also, uh, Winnie is still selling her Kenya Kids calendar and so um, that's available for $19. If you have any questions, uh, you may call Winnie. Uh, her number is in our church directory, or you can call the church office and ask about those. Thank you for all the food that's been donated for Christian Ministries. 
Um, we had to set up a bin in between our rotunda doors this year for us to be able to donate our food, but uh, my goodness, I still saw quite a bit of food um, donated, even though we weren't able to meet in person this year. So thank you all for donating out of the goodness of your heart and your resources for those in need in our community. We are still going to participate in uh, the nursing home gift lift this year. And that is an opportunity for us to um, help someone in the nursing home and nursing facilities in our community to feel like they haven't been forgotten or maybe to feel like there is someone out there who loves them because they may be all alone. And so uh, we will adopt these people and uh, purchase a few items that they might have given on their wish list. If you would like to adopt one of these folks, uh, you can call Shirley Bookout and she's given me permission to put her phone number out there. It is seven four, I'm sorry, seven four four one two zero seven. There it is, seven four four one two zero seven. Call Shirley to adopt one or two. Um, folks to make their Christmas a little merrier this year. Offering envelopes are available at the church. If you would like to pick yours up, you can call the church office and arrange for um, pickup with Rhea, our bookkeeper. Don't forget to have your communion elements ready for our communion later on in the service as we uh, partake in Holy Communion every Sunday. And also, um, Families, I sent an email earlier in the week with a word search puzzle for the children that they'll want to do after our um, children's moment. So if you haven't had an opportunity to do that, you can go do that and print that off for them real quick. Well, we begin Advent next Sunday. As Lori said, it is hard to believe that we are at this moment. Um, here is a preview of our Advent worship series this year called I Believe even when. everyone. We worship in gratitude. God is the source, the ultimate source of all that is good. And so we come here today with grateful hearts for God who gives and gives and gives. So let us join our voices together in thanks as we sing together. Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done and proclaim that his name is exalted.
welcome once again. Children, would you like to come forward and join me? And while you're doing that, Tony just informed me that we have a special announcement to make. Uh, apparently today, Dr. David and Susan Cartwright are celebrating their 53rd wedding anniversary. That is incredible. Thank you for sharing that with us and congratulations. We love you both dearly. Hi, children. Do you enjoy working puzzles? Now there are different kinds of puzzles and, and I like doing puzzles, but I especially enjoy word puzzles, word search puzzles. And I have a word search puzzle this morning. Hopefully your parents have printed off the puzzle that I sent for you this week. Now after the children's moment this morning, they can give each of you one of these puzzles so that you can find all the words that are hidden in there. The title of the puzzle is My Thanksgiving List. I looked at all the things on this list and made another list. It is a list of the top 10 things for which I am thankful. Your top 10 list might be different from mine, but here is my Thanksgiving top 10 list. My house. There are many people in this world today who have no place to live. Many of them sleep on park benches and under bridges. Food. We have enough to eat at our house. Many people don't. Sometimes I see people standing beside the road holding a sign that says, we'll work for food. Clothes. I never have to worry about whether there will be clothes in my closet for me to put on each day. Many people only have the clothes that they are wearing. Health. I am thankful that I am blessed with good health. Many people have a serious illness which keeps them from enjoying a full and happy life. My country. I am thankful that I live in a country where I enjoy great freedom. In many countries, they don't have much freedom. And in some countries, you can get in trouble for telling others about Jesus. Teachers. I am thankful for the teachers that I have had in school and in church who have taught me the things I needed to know to live a happy and successful life. Friends. I am thankful for my many friends. In times of trouble, I have always had friends who were there to help me. Family. I am thankful for my family. God has given me a wonderful husband and many other family members whom I love very much. Parents. I am thankful that God blessed me with parents who loved me, cared for me, and taught me about Jesus and his love. Jesus. Jesus is number one on the list of things for which I am thankful. No one ever loved me like Jesus. He loved me so much that he was willing to die on a cross so that I can have everlasting life. Thank you, Jesus. Well, that is my top 10 list. I have been given much. The Bible says that God blesses us and gives us much so that we may show our thanks by sharing it with others. I hope that this Thanksgiving, we will share what God has given us with those who do not have as much as we do. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for all of your rich blessings. Help us to share what you have given us with those who are less fortunate than we are. Amen. Now, don't forget to do your word puzzle. If you have your Bibles with you, I would encourage you to flip to the chapter of Luke in the New Testament. We will be in um, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19, and this will be the Common English Bible Translation. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, 10 men with skin diseases approached him. Keeping their distance from him, they raised their voices and said, Jesus, Master, show us mercy. 
When Jesus saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. As they left, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he had been healed, returned and praised God with a loud voice. He fell on his face at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus replied, weren't 10 cleansed? Where are the other nine? No one returned to praise God except this foreigner. Then Jesus said to him, get up and go. Your faith has healed you. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. I want you to think about, was there something that you really wanted as a child, but you didn't get? A pony, a tree house, a, a pool. There, there were a couple of things for me. My, my friend Ricky Nolan, I would go and visit him, and he had this little motorcycle, this little dirt bike, and I'd go over to his house, and he'd be driving and I'd be on the back of that and we'd ride all over the place and the thing would seem tiny tiny to me now it's probably like a 50 cc kind of motorcycle a little tiny engine probably the top speed was 20 miles an hour or so but he lived out in the woods and and us riding around on that way oh so many good times and I come home I said mom dad I want a dirt bike oh can you can we get one and no no we can't get you one up and the answer was always when you're 12 that's when we could get one well I was seven or eight years old then 12 seemed like an eternity away the other thing was a bb gun i'd go to friends houses and they all had bb guns and we'd shoot up cans or whatever it was with it and fun times and come home mom dad i want a bb gun w would you give me a bb gun now we weren't a gun household at all we didn't have guns around and the thing was i ruined my chances though i and they asked what I would do with it. And I said, I would shoot my older sister with it. Well, I can't blame them for not giving me one. I, I didn't get one. And the answer again was, well, when you're 12, you can have one then. By the time I was 12, I was into other things. I didn't want mini bikes and BB guns and things like that. But there was also, there was a difference between what I wanted and what I needed. I wanted motorcycles and BB guns, but what I probably needed was good shoes, clothing, healthy, loving home, maybe a soccer ball, some toys, or some books. And the way I was that motorcycles and BB guns were a hazard to my health and others, but those were the things that I wanted. There was a difference between what I wanted and what I needed. I think that that's true here in the story. I had a friend that pointed out something that I had missed in the years and years that I have read the story. And you've probably heard this story many times. It's kind of the go-to one for Thanksgiving. 10 men with leprosy call out to Jesus. Jesus, master, have mercy on us. Jesus sends them to the priest and on the way they're healed. But one of them who happened to be a Samaritan, an outsider was the one who went back to say, thank you. Now, this is you can't go wrong with this story on Thanksgiving, can you? I mean, there's a whole lot to be said about thankfulness right here. This one is, is he has, he's able to see that what Jesus has done for him, he turns back and wants to express his thanks. I mean, this is a slam dunk for Thanksgiving. But I missed something in this story that a friend pointed out to me. My friend pointed out that these lepers, as they call out to Jesus, they're not asking for healing. What they're asking for is money uh, for alms. And we've seen this a thousand times, haven't we? Maybe you go to downtown Indianapolis, there's a person on a street corner sitting in a wheelchair, maybe doesn't even have, maybe legs have been amputated and with a can for change asking for money. I mean, we've seen this again and again. Well, that's what's happening here in the story as Jesus goes by and they call out what they're asking for is alms. Throw some coins our way, Jesus, is what they're asking. They weren't necessarily asking for healing, but what they're asking for is money. Now that changes the story a little bit when you begin to think about it, doesn't, doesn't it? And it makes me think about what are we asking for in our own lives? What is it that we want for ourselves? And maybe even deeper than BB guns and motorcycles, what do you wish for in your heart of hearts for yourself? 
And I mean, even more than, I mean, we all have these, these pipe dream wishes to win the lottery or, or whatever that is. We all have those wish lists, but, but what do you want for yourself? Enough money to pay the bills, love, an honest friend, a trip to someplace warm in the winter. What's the thing that you, you say to yourself, if I just had this, then I would be all right. Health for your body, a boost in your checking account, a house in a better neighborhood, a, a friend who truly understood you. I, I, find my, I found myself with these wishes through the years. I, I've told myself, if I just had this one thing, then I would be okay. Uh, a quicker mind, a bigger bank account. If I was only 15 pounds lighter, if I had this thing, I tell myself, I, I, then I would be okay. Then, then I would be all right. I read a book about relationships, and there was a man who, who talked about, the, the author of it, he talked about how he had learned to value relationships in his life. And earlier in his life, his hope and his wish was that he hoped to get to the place where he could finally afford to, to shop for clothes at Brooks Brothers. Now, if you've ever been in a Brooks Brothers store, you know that they're nice clothes, high-end, preppy-looking kind of clothes, but they're, they're expensive. If you've ever wandered in one of those stores, you, if you're like me, you say, mm, I, I don't know if I can afford to shop here. But he thought to himself, he thought, that's what I would want for myself. If I can finally get to the place where I can shop there, then I know that I will have arrived in life. I'll have what I, I want. And when I can buy what I want there, then, then I'll be okay. Well, he finally got to the place where he could. Well, he was making enough money that he went and he bought himself a Brooks Brothers shirt. Put down $100 or whatever it was for the shirt. Bought the shirt. First day wearing the shirt. Thought he had arrived finally. He was feeling like he was, he was on cloud nine. Finally, he, had, he was wearing his Brooks Brothers shirt. He washed it. And he went to put it on the next time. And he noticed that, that a button had fallen off the shirt. And he realized that he had gotten what he wanted, but he realized what he wanted was deteriorating. It wasn't lasting. It wasn't, there wasn't lasting value. And, and he, re he realized maybe it wasn't what he needed. And he learned then to, to begin to value relationships more than things. But what about you? What do you want? And is it what you need? These lepers here, I mean, here comes Jesus. And they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Throw some money our way. With your coins, we can buy food for the coming day. Have, have mercy on us, Jesus. Now, does Jesus give them what they ask for? Well, no. He sends them off to the priest. Now, the priest would have had the job of, of inspecting someone in that culture with leprosy to say, okay, you, you're sick or you're healthy. It would have been had the job of sort of a health inspector. The priest would have given them the okay to return to normal society. As lepers, they had to live outside the city. They had to live separated from society. The priest would have said, okay, it's, it's okay for you to come back. And you know the story. As Jesus has sent them on the way, they are healed. But one saw, one noticed one had the eyes to see what had happened. Now, they all saw, and certainly they all noticed that they had been healed. But the Samaritan, this outsider, was the one that realized he had been given more than what he had asked for, but he had been given what he needed. And what they needed was health and vitality and community and life. And Jesus gives it to them. And more than just a few measly cents or dollars, more than... 10 bucks in their, their plate, he, he gives them what they needed. So this one turns around to say thank you. Well, what about you? What do you need? When your, your life is laid bare, what, what is it you truly need? We come to this time here in our country where we are celebrating Thanksgiving. And it seems like such a strange time to celebrate a holiday called Thanksgiving, isn't it? Because um, in typical times, right now, a lot of us would be traveling. Um, the church would be full on a day like today. There would be a lot of gatherings, but, but we've had to let go of so many of those things, haven't we? A lot of our gatherings are canceled. Uh, 
a lot of us are living with unsure lives. And we've had to think about in this time, not just what we want, because we've had to let go of so many things we want, but we've had to think about what do we truly need. Not just what do we want in perfect times, but we've had to think about what do we truly need. Often, our wants are at, not at odds with our needs. Or often we don't know what we need, or we seek the wrong thing. Oftentimes we're like these lepers, we're asking for a few coins, but Jesus offers healing. He offers life. Too often we're looking for what we want and not necessarily what we need. And we learn here that Jesus is not interested in just throwing a few measly bucks at a problem, but he brings healing, community, and life. In him we find not just what we think we want, but what we need. And this one, this one person who had had leprosy understands this. This one Samaritan understands it. They all knew that they had been healed, but this one, his eyes were open to the point where he saw, he understood that Jesus had given him truly what he needed and he had given him healing, but not only he healing, but he'd given him his life back. He was able to return back to his community, to his family, to his friends. He had, had uh, the love of community back. He'd been restored to his community. And so he turned around, he went back to Jesus praising God because he got not what he asked for, but what he needed. That's all of us too, isn't it? I mean, think about it. Why are you tuning in to a church worship service on your computer or your phone? I mean, something a year ago that you never would have guessed that you'd be doing right now, but you're doing it. Uh, the, the bar has been raised higher if you want to go to church in a way because you got you to get out your computer, but yet you're here. You're listening. You're a part of this. You're worshiping together. And, and you do that, I think, because you know in your heart that Christ gives us what we need. We all don't get what we want all of the time, do we? Not every prayer is answered in the ways we want. Not every wish is granted. If we all got what we wanted, we'd all be richer and healthier and better looking and all of that. But we don't get what we want, do we? But that's okay. Because sometimes what we want really isn't what we need. Sometimes we're spiritually wishing for BB guns and dirt bikes when something so much more is offered. What is offered in Jesus is life, community, hope, justice, joy. We find in Jesus, we find life. And life is, in the, in the biblical sense, is so much more than just a heart beating. Life means that we are connected to God's beloved covenant community. And that's all of us. We're all drawn together in God's beloved community. We find in Jesus hope, hope that even though the night may be dark, and these last few months have been dark, I know that, but yet we know, we, we believe and hope that joy comes in the morning. And justice, the God ultimately in God's ultimate future will make things right. And, and that causes us to say we will work for justice and for things to be right even now when we don't live in its fullness. And joy, we are offered joy, joy in our hearts that is not affected in the moment, but yet we live with joy in our hearts knowing who God is, that God loves us and what God is doing. And all of that comes in God's kingdom. And that's what we need, isn't it? And Jesus comes bringing it. That's what we need. In our heart of hearts, what Jesus offers us is what we need. And we've received it. We continue to receive it. So all of us, in a way, are like those lepers on the way to see the priest. We know we've been healed. We might not have been given what we wanted, but we know we've been given what we need. We know we have received the only proper response then is to turn around and say thanks. Amen. It's a gift to be simple. It's a gift to be kind. It's a gift to smile and to share. Thank you.
Thank you, Mariana and Sally. Let us join together in prayer. Faithful and loving God, we say thank you because we know that you are the author of all that is good. We thank you. We know that this, you know, certainly that this has been a hard time for all of us. We're lonely, we're afraid, some are sick, are tired or unsure. Some of us are broke. So many of us are fearful. So many we have loved are sick. And all of us are lonely for one another. But even in these hard and unusual circumstances, yet we come together here before Thanksgiving to say thank you. We thank you for health professionals who are serving heroically in extraordinary circumstances, bringing healing and bringing life. We thank you for leaders who make decisions in charity and wisdom. We thank you for neighbors making smart decisions. We thank you for every person who puts on a mask. We thank you for everyone who shows caution and love for one another and how they treat one another in these extraordinary times. And we thank you for hope, even in hard moments. We thank you for joy, even in sad times. We thank you for love, for yours and your people, for our loved ones, for these gifts that are what we need, we, we thank you. And so we gather as one people to say thank you. And we pray for ourselves, our families, our communities, our nation, and our world. Guide us into the hope that you call us into. And as you guide us along the way, we say thank you. Amen. Well, as we come to our time when we celebrate our giving, and we come together to share in communion. Um, we know that the gifts that we give and the gifts that we share are our small ways of saying thank you. Whenever we choose to give a gift, when we give of ourselves to our church, to our community, to the needs all around us, they are in a way for, they are a way that our heart says thank you. You all have given those gifts in so many different ways to our church, to our food collection, to the needs all around us, to the needs in your own life. They are your ways that you have turned back to say thank you. And so I thank you for the ways that you have shared your gifts of thankfulness. Let's join in preparing our hearts to celebrate our gifts and to celebrate together in sharing communion as we sing together our communion song.
All of us know those moments of deep thankfulness. Maybe after you've pushed back from a meal with your loved ones and the meal was so good, but yet your heart is full by being together. Or maybe it's when you look into the eyes of your beloved and you're so thankful for that person in your life. Or maybe it's just watching the sun rise or set. And you're thankful for the gift of that day. We all know those moments of deep thankfulness. And I think as we share in communion, part of the reason we share again and again is to call out our thankfulness, to focus again on who God is, on God's love for us, and all that God has done for us. And so here as we share, we say thank you. And so we remember that it was on the night that our Lord was betrayed that he took a loaf of bread. When he'd given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying to them, this is my body, it's given for you. <laughs> Do this to remember me. And in the same way, too, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it to remember me. Let us pray. Dear Father, as we prepare for Thanksgiving, we confess our need for you today. So often we take you for granted. We take for granted you will always answer our prayers, that you will heal us and make us whole. Forgive us for not appreciating your grace and daily presence in our lives. Lord, open our eyes to see the countless blessings you shower upon us each day so that we may live lives of gratitude and grace. The COVID-19 pandemic has changed this Thanksgiving from the large family gatherings we have known in the past. This Thanksgiving, many are fearful about gathering together with family and friends. In this season of Thanksgiving, we need your healing touch and your grace. We need hope restored. Forgive us for trying to fix our many challenges and difficult circumstances all on our own. Forgive us for forgetting how much we need you above everyone and everything else. Lord, we give thanks for our church families and friends who gather at home to hear your message and feel the comforting spirit of our Savior. Lord, we know you are with us today, just as we know the Spirit of Christ is with us at all times. As we gather together to eat this symbolic meal, we recognize the presence of your Son in the bread we eat. May our grateful hearts rule our lives and actions this week. Father, we give you thanks for your eternal and limitless love. Now, we ask you to forgive our sins and continue to bless our church and our lives with the love of Christ as we offer the prayer he taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us join now in sharing and communion. This is the body of Christ. This is the cup of new life. Let us share together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we hope we have shown ourselves in the past to be a giving church. We want to support our devoted and hardworking Hazelwood staff and ask your blessing upon them as they serve us and you during these difficult times. We want to support those outside our church who desperately need help with food, clothing, or bills they can't pay. We ask your blessing upon them as they struggle. What we give back is a tiny portion of what is needed, but it is a start. Please guide our giving to the hands that need it. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. We have had a glimpse of the kingdom of God. We have had a hint of the promise of what God has yet to do. And so let that glimpse go with us so that we might serve together in thankfulness until all are fed, until all know a place called home, until all are free, until justice is done, until peace is the way, until grace is the law, and until love is the rule, until God's kingdom comes. May you go in God's peace. Grace and peace to all.